So now let's talk about how we go about saving registers and restoring them. And the way we do this is we put them on the stack. And the stack is just a piece of memory, it's a special address in memory, where we know that we can save registers. So we talked about needing a convention between callers and callees, and we covered how we need to know where to expect the arguments and results. And we talked about how we could specify particular register files for that. But we also need to make sure we don't overwrite each other's registers. And this is a little bit more tricky. So some of the registers are going to be called, saved by the callee, and some are saved by the caller. And this is the convention we have. So if the callee uses some of these callee saved registers, then it has to save them. And if the caller uses some of the caller saved registers, then it has to save them. So we divided up who saves what between the callee and the caller. So how do we actually save and restore things? So to save it, we copy a register to memory. And once it's in memory, it won't be overwritten if the caller, if the callee uses the register. And when we're restoring, we copy a register back from memory to the original register. So we're using this memory location called the stack in order to keep all of these values safe. So why do we need to save and restore in the first place? Well, we saw an example of that where the callee and the caller don't know which registers they use, so they overwrite each other. And in general, this is a real problem. So the callee doesn't know which registers the caller is using because it could be in a different piece of code. Somebody else could have written it. We have this convention that specifies where our arguments and results are, but other than that, we have no idea to know which registers which one uses. And the caller doesn't know who's the callee we're using, because you could have multiple sub-procedures. So when I call update, update could call special update. And so you could have multiple procedures, so there's no way to know who's using what. So we need this convention which specifies which registers the callee and caller need to save. So how do we save registers? Well, in MIPS, we have a special part of memory called the stack for saving registers. So here's our memory, and you can see we've got some data that we've saved in here. And we've got the special register called the stack pointer, or register 29, which keeps track of this. So here the stack pointer is pointing to the end of the stack. And in MIPS, the stack grows down. So as we put more data on the stack, we're going to move the stack pointer down. So let's take a look at this. Here's our stack pointer before, here's our stack and our stack pointer before a procedure call. Now we're going to call the procedure. So we're going to move the stack pointer down and we're going to save some data onto the stack. We we'll move it down again and save some other data and move it down again and save some other data. So here, for example, we've called a callee and the callee has decided to save three registers on the stack. So it's had to move the stack pointer down three words and then it stored those three registers to the stack. Now, when the procedure is done, it can go and restore those registers by reading the values off the stack, and it will finally move the stack back to where it was before. So during the procedure, we keep all of this safe in memory, and then after the procedure, we're going to return the stack to the way it was before we were called. So here we are. We've now read these off, put them back in the register file, and moved the stack pointer back to where it was. So the stack gives procedures a safe place to store data that doesn't fit in the registers, and each procedure is going to manage its own stack space so they don't interfere. So here we see we've got one, this is the caller's part of the stack, and the callee puts stuff on the end of it. And this works great as long as you return the stack to the way it was before. So here's where the stack was before the procedure was called. During the procedure, it put lots of data on it, but when the procedure was done, it put the stack right back the way it was before it was called. So who saves what? Here's our picture of the register file. And here we've got these red register files, these T or temporary registers. These are caller save. What this means is if the caller uses any of these registers, then the caller has to save them on the stack before it calls. The orange ones, these are callee save. This means if the callee uses any of these registers, then the callee has to save them on the stack before it writes over them. And then it has to restore them from the stack before it returns. So we have callee saved, or S, registers for save, and caller saved, or T, registers for temporary registers. So how much do we need to move the stack pointer? So the stack pointer address is stored in register 31, which is stack pointer, and how much do we need to decrement it to make space for a register? Well, the answer is we need to decrement it by 4, because each register is 4 bytes wide, and each memory address is 1 byte. So if here's our stack pointer, we need to go in and subtract 4 from our stack pointer, and this will put our new stack pointer pointing down at the next location, so we've moved our stack down by one entry. 
So how do we go about actually storing something to the stack? So which one of these is the right code for storing R16 onto the stack? Well, the answer to this is we need to dec decrement our stack by four bytes, enough for one item, and then store R16 to that location. So let's take a look here. Here's our stack pointer. We're going to add I minus four to the stack pointer. So this is going to cause our stack pointer to move down one location. Then we're going to store R16 to where the stack pointer is. So now we've stored R16 onto the stack. How do we restore R16 from the stack? So this is the opposite. Well, here we're going to do pretty much the inverse. We're going to load R16 from where the stack pointer is pointing, and then we're going to add 4 to the stack pointer to put it where it was before. So let's take a look at this. So here's our load word, and here's our stack pointer pointing at R16. We're going to load it into register 16, so now we've restored whatever value we'd, stored on, we'd saved from before. And then we're going to add 4 to the stack pointer, which is going to move our stack pointer back up to where it was before. So now let's take a look at how this all comes together with nested calls. So here's our main, which is our caller, and main calls B. So now B is a callee for main. But what if B then calls C? So now B is the caller for C, and C is the callee. So we've got this nested function here. And then eventually these are going to return. So what happens to the stack in this situation? Well, when we start out, main is going to store some registers on the stack. So here are main's registers stored on the stack, and then it's going to call B. Now when we're in B, B is also going to save some registers on the stack. So here are B's registers on the stack, and it does that before it calls C. And when C executes, C is going to store some registers on the stack. And it's going to go ahead and process this, and then it's going to return the registers back to get back to B, and then it's going to return. So what you see here is that when we get back to B, the stack is exactly the way it was when B had it before called C. So we've returned the stack to the way it was before. C stored a whole bunch of stuff on the stack, but it took it back and put it back in the register file and then moved the stack pointer back before it returned. The same thing happens when B returns. So when B returns, we clean up the stack and put it just back the way it was before when we were in main. So, what you see here is that the stack grows and shrinks as we call more and more procedures and return from procedures. And each procedure can put data onto the stack, and then it has to make sure it removes data from the stack when it's done. So some machines actually provide stacks as part of their architecture. So the old VAX machines and the Java virtual machine are both stack-based. In MIPS, you have to implement this in software, which is why we're doing all of this work to increment and decrement the stack pointer. 